Okay, white. Oh, testing, testing. One, two, three, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Hello, 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 hello. Ah! Testing, testing. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Testing. Testing, 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 testing. Hello, 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 hello. Is this working? Is that working now? No? Still not working? Testing, testing, testing. Good. The kids okay. are in here Friday night turned off the amps. Uh, Which one did you turn up? <laughs> I hear maybe it's me. I'll try it now. Testing. Testing. Testing, testing, testing. Is this, oh, maybe this is on. No, that's not on. Okay, something's too high. Okay, I just think we should start pushing buttons. <laughs> testing. Somebody pushed the button. Yeah. Okay. Um, is this loud enough? So our kids and Teresa got into the sound system, so we had a... Ah! <laughs> oh. So, A, um, thank you for making all these great treats. It's a Cinco de Mayo celebration. And they're still making more coffee because we got a large crowd. So um, we're still making coffee. So why don't we begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord with you. <laughs> Almighty God, we ask you to pour forth your Holy Spirit onto us and give us the wisdom to defend our faith in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, sound okay or too loud? Somewhere between just right and too loud. Well, thank God we have Deacon Chris the Tall. Um, to <laughs> and the greater, the greater, oh, that's it. And Father Len the Lesser here, so... Um, so this, I'm going to have a series of class on apologetics, and to be honest, I'm going to have these always every year. Uh, unfortunately, I over-prepared just for the opening lecture, because we're going to do five, and I have 47 pages, <laughs> uh, 49 pages, so we're not even going to get through it. And my point being is that just on today's subject, that's just going to be science and religion, I could easily go three days. Uh, three classes. But um, sociologically, just the word apologetics, in case you know it, doesn't mean to apologize. It means to defend. And I think, especially these days, you need to be able to defend your faith because there's all this craziness, uh, half-truths about the faith. And there's been this sea change sociologically that did you know a hundred years ago, if you're applying for a bank loan, they would ask what church you went to. Because sociologically, they understood, well, that good moral people go to church. And then about 50 to 30 years ago, it was kind of a live and let 
live philosophy, right? Religion's nice, it's a good thing, but essentially harmless. They wouldn't ask those questions. But starting about 20 years ago, there was this huge sea change. And now, with what's called, quote-unquote, the new atheist, religion is evil. That's what we're facing today. That's why I want to have these uh, classes on apology. So the new atheists, and that's, I'll explain that at the end, what they are, they are actively promoting that the greatest evil in the world is religion. And subtly, subtly, our children are being taught this with every single, not every single, but many TV programs and movies. So my mother and I watched this movie called um, something in Jersey, Jersey Potato Peel, Peel Book Club. Um, and, you know, underneath was this anti-religious theme to it, that... Um, all the religious people were vicious, judgmental. Um, like I, I can't even watch, there's a show called Young Sheldon. Um, I can't stand it because every religious person is an idiot. And the eight non-religious people, they're fun-loving and non-judgmental. Now, I'm going to prove that the science is actually the opposite. Or even Star Trek, The Next Generation, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, they always had this theme of science being logical versus religion. And the number one reason um, people in this poll said not to be religious, the number one reason they gave is um, that religion is opposed to science. Now, that's actually a very modern uh, promotion by the new atheists. No historian would ever agree with that. In fact, the ancient Christians... Um, believed in uh, Catholics, ancient Christians believe that science, what you'd call science, is a way of doing theology because Christ is the logos. In the Gospel of John, when it says Christ is the logos, logos, we translate it word, but you can hear it. It means logic. That the logos is a philosophical term is this divine intelligence that rules the world. And the logos took on flesh in Jesus Christ. But the idea of the Logos is that there is this divine order and intelligence to the universe. And so all science is studying the pattern ordered of the universe, which means all science, ancient Christians believe, is really studying the Logos, Christ. So science is a religious act of studying the creator, Christ. Um, Early Christians believed that the universe was not random or accident or meaningless. And therefore, if it's not random, you can do science. There's a pattern. Um, the divine logos made the pattern. Now, the twist is that I'll get in a second. It's atheism that believes that the universe is random. Well, if the universe is random and meaningless, why do science if it's all random? If the universe has an intelligence to it, then you can do science. Um, or even this, this is a story, old story, about two people getting on a train in France, and the older passenger is sitting there reading the Bible. And this younger passenger sits in the booth next to him and says, do you, pardon sir, do you really believe everything you're writing, reading? And he says, yes, I do believe it. He says, you don't? And the young man says, no, I'm a scientist. Religion conflicts with science. And the old man was gracious about it, and he continued to read, and then finally said, well, this is my station, he gets off, and the young man says, oh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, what's your name? And he said, Louis, Louis Pasteur. <laughs> um, one of the great scientists of that age. And now here's the real twist. Um, all the great scientists in history, doesn't Gregory Mendel, Isaac N Newton, uh, Kepler, Galileo, uh, Einstein, they all believed in God. It's this modern promotion image that science and religion is at war. As I said, no historian would believe that. That's a modern um, uh, uh, propaganda by the new atheists in Hollywood. So here's the really interesting. Do you know who most provo uh, promoted and started this myth that religion is at war with science? It was Andrew Dice White. Oh, sorry, Andrew Dixon White. And at this point, you're saying, who the heck is he? 
he wrote this book, um, very, very famous book, uh, called The War of Religion and Science, except really what he was was this anti-immigrant, anti-Irish, anti-Catholic person uh, who wrote this famous book, How Religion Attacked Galileo. But really, it was an anti-Catholic book because he wanted the United States just for white Protestants. Um, and so he developed this myth that the church persecuted Galileo. Well, I'm not going to really get too much of that, but Galileo is, you know who Galileo's best friend was? The Pope at the time. Then also another saint, um, Saint, um, whose name I'm forgetting right now, um, he's known for science too. Oh, come on, you know who he is. There's a high school named after him. Oh, who cares? Anyhow, and two of his daughters were none. And you know from the letters of his daughter, Galileo was always a faithful Catholic. He was actually in some ways very spiritual. He was controversial. But why Galileo was sil silenced by the church was for political reasons with, uh, you have to know what's going on in Sweden and the Thirty Years' War. But anyhow, um, Andrew's book, The History of Conflict Between Religion and Science, it outsold everything. And it has all these lies, these confected facts and chronolog chronologies and made-up quotes. Um, and his biggest rant was against Catholicism. Now, it's easy to disprove all these misquotes and twisted facts, but they become popular. And here's one of his popular things. I remember studying this when I was a kid. Um, do you remember, did you, were you ever taught that Columbus, he believed that the ocean was round? And I remember the little book I had where he's holding an orange and <laughs> looking at it like, oh, it's a world or a ball. And, oh, the world is round. Do you, anybody ever taught that, wow, before Columbus, they thought the world was flat? Anybody ever taught that? Total BS. Um, the Greeks knew that the world was round. What they argued about was the circumference of the earth. But even the ancient Greek philosophers had figured out the world was round. What they were arguing about, the University of Toledo, is how round it was. Um, but he twists that whole story into it was the Catholics that were suppressing the truth. Where he says about Francis Bacon in the 13th century that Francis Bacon was imprisoned uh, by the Pope for doing science. That's not true. Um, actually, Bacon was asked by Pope Clement IV to write an experiment and study. And then Weitz describes how um, priests went running around calling Francis Bacon a witch. That's not true. That the church let 60,000 children die because Bacon wasn't allowed to save them using science. That's a lie. Um, and the lies are so popular that Carl Sagan, in his um, uh, series Cosmos, falsely tells some of these stories in the program. Um, so anyhow, historically accurate is this. Science was studied as a part of religion, at least in Catholicism. It's the church that started universities. Where did universities come from? There are monasteries that developed, uh, there are monastery schools. That's how universities started. Or most priests were astronomers and scientists. Why is Galileo always corresponding with so many priests? Because they were the intelligentsia. The other astronomers were mostly priests. But what you have is these quote unquote new atheists who promote this lie. Um, that, here's a lie. This was part of the Cosmos program. Which the narrator says, Isaac Newton rejected faith, and that allowed him to become a great scientist. This is absolutely historically incorrect. Actually, Isaac Newton thought that um, his theological writings would be remembered more than his scientific discoveries. Isaac Newton was intensely theological. He never disavowed it. Um, and the odd part is... How could like, the, the new atheists want to promote that science and religion are incompatible? 
but really it's atheism that's incompatible with science. Because this is from Dartmouth astrophysicist Glazier who said, I honestly think that atheism is inconsistent with the scientific method. What I mean is, what is atheism? It is a categorical statement that expresses belief and non-belief. I don't believe even though I don't have any evidence for or against it. I simply don't believe because I don't want to believe. That's just a declaration. But in science, we don't really do declarations. We say, okay, I have a hypothesis, but you have to have some evidence for or against it. My colleagues, such as Adam Frank and a bunch of others, talk more and more about the relationship between science and spirituality. This case has been made several times and cannot be logically refuted. Nevertheless, uh, atheists are often playing to audiences' ignorance of science itself, and the new atheists strut around like strut around like popinjays, just drinking in the adulation of their followers. Unquote. That really, it's science is incompatible with atheism because all atheism really does is make these declarations: there is no god, that science and religion are at war, but they never really prove any evidence. Pascal, Kepler, Galileo, Einstein, many others. Einstein writes about the connection between science and mysticism. Uh, Pascal, one of my heroes, one of the greatest mathematicians of his time, brilliant, he actually was a mystic. The science and religion is the same. So science is compatible with studying the logos. So you have three positions I want to offer you. One is a Catholic position, and that is science and religion are studies of God. They're two sides of the same thing. Then you have the new atheist position that science and religion are incompatible. And then you have the third position, and that is true. Some evangelicals believe science uh, is against religion. But we're Catholics. We have this idea, it's an ancient idea called the two-book theory, and the two books are scripture and nature. Um, and the strict division between science and religion doesn't exist in Catholicism. Historically, it's born of the same impulse to know God. So um, we believe that there's two books. One is science and one is scripture, and they both are explanations of God. Um, St. Augustine said reason and faith are both necessary for theological inquiry. And he called it the unity of truths. That really, it's not two separate truths, religion and science. Um, he said it's one truth, and it's God. So he said there is no teacher of truth but God. No matter where truth comes to light, there is one teacher of truth, and that is God. If nature teaches one thing and scripture another, one must use reason to figure out the truth, and contradictions must be admitted. And then he talks about the doctrine of the two books, that these are two complementary ways of studying God himself. God is revealed in truth, so let scripture be a book for you so that you can hear it. Let nature be a book for you so that you can see it. So like the ancient Celts in the Middle Ages, they would say, no, science and religion are the same thing. Now, Augustine also has this idea of what's called the doctrine of accommodation. That, um, you know, just raise your hand, even though I can't really see you. Um, raise your hand if I lose you. But the doctrine of accommodation is this. You can say, well, no, no, it says the world is created in six days. Or, you know, it says that, right? But Augustine, and this is almost 2,000 years ago, said, yes, but the day is not created. Like a 24-hour day is not created until the fourth day. So he said, clearly, what um, God accommodates himself to the understanding of people. All we know is that um, a day is what he would call an eon of eons of time, unmeasurable. God took non-living matter and made living human beings. And if a 24-hour day is not created on the fourth day, then clearly you can't interpret it literally. God is trying to accommodate to our small brains. Does that make sense? Um, so he goes through, and I'm going to skip all this, a lot of these, 
But he wrote that 600 years ago. So you can, if you read the Bible, this idea of that, trying to express a truth. Um, so science should actually inform our understanding of Scripture. That was Augustine's belief. That's an ancient Catholic belief. Or even fairly recently, John Paul II said, faith and reason has to be done together. That science and religion are two wings in which the human spirit rises to contemplation. Isn't that a great line? See, Augustine said two books. John Paul II said two wings in which a human spirit rises. And faith without exercising reason is, he condemns, and quote, runs a risk of withering either into myth or superstition. So the real answer is that Catholics believe in this way called mystery. And we explore mystery, the mystery of God, through science and religion. The second position is the new atheist. The new atheist says science and religion are complete opposite things. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Apollo 8, the first man flight, um, one Christmas Eve, uh, first time, gets to see the view, a live view of the Earth from the outside. And when the astronaut sees the earth, the blue ball, for the first time, begins to read the opening of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And there's this woman named Madeline Murray, uh, Murray O'Hare who filed a lawsuit against the two astronauts as federal employees for reading scripture in space. Um, and <laughs> it's kind of strange, but NASA uh, folded on it. So Buzz Aldrin... I don't know how he did this, but Buzz Aldrin, when he landed on the moon, made a connections with a priest to bring the Eucharist in a pix and, oh, and took communion uh, on the moon as opposition. But uh, the new atheists promote this idea that no, either you have to believe in science or religion. There's no in-between. And Dawkins, I'll explain him in a sec, says, in a second, um, calls anybody who's religious, he says, we shouldn't call them religious, we should call them the dims. And anybody who's an atheist is a bright. You know. But this other scientist, uh, uh, Alistair McGrath, said uh, he takes, Dawkins gives uh, conclusions and promotes fallacies, but never shows any evidence beside, behind his positions. And he creates these straw men argument. Um, of mischaracterizing religion, and then says, look how brainless these religious people are. He doesn't. He doesn't cite evidence. He makes straw man arguments. And I'll get into these in a few minutes. He'll say, oh, the Bible says. Hey, hey, I warn you, I'll get a couple of these, because your kids will know these. It happens all the time with teenagers. The Bible says X. And I'll say, oh, yeah, um, yeah it, it does say that. Like, I'll give you a popular one, so you know what I mean. Like, um, when it says uh, that you should uh, love all people, well, in the um, Old Testament, it'll say, no, no, God just means that you should love your fellow Jews, not other people. But literally, the verse after that, God says that you must love the stranger, you must love the foreigner, and treat them as your own. So, um, yeah, it does say you should love your own uh, countrymen. So, Dawkins will say, see, God doesn't promote love of all people. He just promotes love of your own kind. But he doesn't tell them the verse following. Does that make sense? Um, and he does this constantly of misquoting the Bible or mis making straw arguments um, or misquoting history so that it looks like science and religion are opposites. Now, I will give him this. The third position, yes, there are some evangelical Christians who do believe that science is evil. But, you know, that's a tiny, tiny fraction of Christians. Um, like, they believe all science is wrong. They believe the world was created in 4,000 years. Um, now, was it 4,000? 4,000 years ago. Oh, 6,000 years ago, is actually, sorry, 6,000 years ago. Now, you know who else thought that based on math? the math of the time, Isaac Newton. And he shows his math. But um, 
they base it on something else. But anyhow, um, yeah, you do get some crazy supposed Christians who think that all science is wrong. And you say, well, what about the dinosaur bones? They'll say, oh, God planted those there as a test. <laughs> so what, a test? So God is the great deceiver? Um, God has engaged in this mass subterfuge to test Christians that whether they're going to believe in faith or science, we would say that's crazy. So there is that third position, but it's tiny. But the Catholic position is that as children of light, we should rejoice in every ray of knowledge that comes to us and shouldn't shrink whether um, it comes from science or religion, even when science challenges us. Even St. Augustine said science should challenge us. Children of the truth have the courage to discern and welcome the truth even when it challenges us. So yes, God can be worshipped um, in the lab and math as well as a cathedral. One f in Catholicism flows to another. So we'd say no, religion supports science. Um, that's why you have like Blaise Pascal, who could be also a great scientist and a mystic. He really was a mystic. Or uh, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein said, said religion gave him three things. One taught him to think outside the box. Secondly, religion was devoted to life of the mind. In Judaism, Judaism is very concerned about learning. And secondly, uh, that religion taught him that the universe is knowable. He believed in the God of Spinoza, that there is this logic. And so he has this great line. Like, I like this one. This is above the Princeton library, uh, Princeton uh, fireplace, where it says, uh, Albert Einstein said, subtle the Lord, subtle is the Lord, malicious he is not. God is neither easy nor impossible to decipher. But the problem is, the new atheist started to say that Albert Einstein was an atheist. And Albert Einstein objected to this and said, anybody who calls me an atheist is a dog. Well, I don't know, I think he's pretty clear on that. Um, and he said, um, this is another quote, I like this, it's a little long. Science can only be created by those who are thoroughly imbued with the aspirations towards truth and understanding. This source of feeling, however, springs from the fear, sphere of religion. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. Well, that is Albert Einstein. He's Jewish. But that's a very Catholic thought. We believe science leads to God. Kepler, Newton, Boyle, all great scientists were strong Christians. And... Um, the motivation of their science was to discover more about God. Richard Dawkins, this atheist, says that if you're a scientist, you cannot believe in God. But all the great scientists believe in God. Uh, Gregory Mendel was an abbot of an uh, Augustinian monk. Uh, modern Keith Miller, Boston cell, cellular biologist, said it's inappropriate to use science to make theological conclusions, but it's also inappropriate to use science to make anti-theological statements. Um, that science and religion can make one a saint. So for Catholics, the third way is mystery. I never really liked the option between two bad choices, that either you believe in God or science. We'd say there's a third way, and the third way is mystery. That all of life is mystery, and you can choose to answer it with both the two books of science and religion. Um, I just think it offers a better view. Now, so that's a Catholic position. Now, I'm going to go into the new atheists who are promoting this, but before I do, I just want to take time to see if there's any questions and pop a tequila ball in my mouth. <laughs> because, no, there, no. Kathy made tequila balls. They are tequila balls, right? So, um, no, I mean, it's, it's uh, actually ancient <laughs> Kathy. No, because, no, I just, because the cops can't smell the tequila. That's a, um, okay, move on. Yes, go.
could you, since the creation of the world, Well, that's beautiful. Romans 1, yeah, that actually supports science and religion as one thing. I'm just working to get a cup of coffee. Anybody else? Yeah, Steve. Okay, Steve, you have to, you have to speak louder. Repeat the question. Proverbs. There's also a psalm. A uh, psalm says the same thing. Day and day takes up the story. Everything in creation reveals the glory of God. You can study it all. Okay, so now there's this thing called the new atheist. So um, now, when I say new, oh yeah. Yes. So he asked if I was going to get into scientism. Actually, I'm not going to get into scientism. I'm going to try and destroy scientism. <laughs> um, so the new atheist, um, uh, this is the odd part. Why, what's new about the new atheist? You know, in the past, if you said you're an atheist, that just means you're non-religious, and it's a let live and let, you know, if you want to believe that, that's your business. I don't believe that. The new atheists, um, they're not agnostics. They're bent on making converts to atheism. It is an aggressive movement to make a well-thought-out movement. They want to control society as much as religious fundamentalists want to try and control society. So both the new atheists and the religious fundamentalists, the like, Taliban type, they both insist that they're the ones who are only right and they need it all. The new atheists... If you disagree with them, they would say that we, then they will call you dim or stupid. But religious fundamentalists, if you disagree with them, they say that you're damned. And Richard Dawkins believes that, he quote unquote, said, I have a right to hate religion. What they want to do is start this cultural war between religion and uh, uh, science. Even though, as I said, it's not the Catholic way. They want a cultural war. And religious, uh, Richard Dawkins often says, religion is evil. He actually said, uh, him and Sam Harris both have said that they, we actually may have to execute some religious people because they're so stuck in their ways. Well, he's a secular fundamentalist that's just as extreme as Islamic fundamentalists. He speaks down to religious people the same hubris of condescension that many religious evangelicals do, that fundamentalists do. So the new atheists, they want to remove all religion. And I've got to warn you, you know where they've made their big push? College campuses. Um, don't think that your kids are not getting indoctrinated. So Richard Dawkins says the one thing that messes up the world is religion. No, the thing that messes up the world is fundamentalism. Richard Dawkins equates those Arabs who beheaded Christians with the same as Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King and St. Francis or the Amish who publicly forgave the guy that killed their daughters or the black congregation in Charlton, South Carolina, who forgave and prayed for the young man who went on a shooting spree at the Bible study, um, Richard Dawkins said, yeah, that's nice that they did that, but those religious people are the most dangerous in the world. He basically said that Mother Teresa was a media whore, that the only reason why she was working with the uh, poor in Calcutta is because she won the attention. Um, once again, Sam Harris said, we may have to exterminate some religious people because they're so attached to their religion. Isn't the new atheist call for violence against religion really more akin to the Taliban? If the new atheists want to replace religion with violence, um, then it's just a repeat of the French Revolution, atheism, South Korea, atheism, Mao, atheism, 
Stalin, that left 150 million dead. And that's what they say is going to bring about an enlightenment. And one of my favorite characters is this guy named John Lennox, who's this very famous astrophysicist uh, from England. He's Irish, so naturally he's funny. But, um, no, seriously, he is funny. But he said the new atheism promotes the same blind faith in atheism that they condemn in others. And he says, they're no, the new atheists are no better than these religious fundamentalists who go around, the Taliban, that go around killing. That the new atheists, they want to convert the world. And so, like, this sounds kind of strange, on college campuses, they have these pendants with the letter A on their backpacks and jewelry. It is a marketing campaign. But it's just another form of fundamentalism. Now, the early church, Catholics, were not fundamentalists. Even in Vagrius, I like this, says, do not define God. You can only define the maid. So um, let me introduce you to who the new atheists are and their major arguments. So the pope of the new atheists is this guy named Richard Dawkins. Um, and his refrain is, science leads to atheism. He says that a real scientist is always an atheist. I guess that deletes Albert Einstein. Um, said science is a super highway to atheism. Now, the year that Richard Dawkins published his book, and it's called The God Delusion, three other scientists published books on how science led them to God. Owen Gingrich, God's Universe, Francis Collins, this biologist who was in charge of the Human Genome Project, his book is called The Language of God. I actually love that book. Paul Davis, The Goldilocks Enigma, why the universe is just right for science. Two astrophysicists and one world-class biologist who were award, awarded, awarded the greatest honors in science said that science led them to God. And Richard Dawkins says, no, um, science uh, and God uh, never can go together. Um, how do you fit that with Richard Dawkins' simplistic equation that science always leads to atheism? Uh, Richard Dawkins asserts a scientific conclusion without ever using the scientific method. He pr produces no evidence. He runs away from any proof, um, and he calls anybody who follows God a fool. He does enter into debates, but he won't enter into debate with anybody who's a professional, which is really, you know, uh, because other, certain professionals, uh, he did uh, debate John Lennox, and he found that was a big mistake. But he often won't, he'll only, he says, I'm not going to debate professionals. Well, okay, aren't you great? And Gould, a very famous scientist who recently died, said, um, you can't use the scientific method to prove or disprove God. You can read nature in an atheistic way, or you can read nature from a religious point of view. But you have to pick one first. Uh, and he's right. So Richard Dawkins' first thing is that uh, science always leads to atheism. As I just mentioned with all the great scientists, that's not true. He, and nor does he produce any evidence. His second refrain that's most common is, religion leads to violence. So in his book, after 400 pages where he said he's examined religion scientifically, he concludes that religion has done no good for humanity. Um, Religion, I have to admit, yes, religion sometimes have committed violence and greed, but technically, that's what the commandment of thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain really means. I mean, no offense, but taking the Lord's name in vain is not to say GD. I mean, in one sense it is, I'll give you that, but not really, that's not what God meant. When God says you shall not take the Lord's name in vain, God did not say you shall not say the Lord's name in vain. To take the Lord's name in vain is to misuse religion for violence or greed or selfishness. It's the only commandment where God says, you do that and I will not forget it. Forget it. Um, taking, and besides, God is not God's name. Uh, God is his job description. Your name is not human being. Uh, you are a human being. God is God, but God is not God's name. That's a job description. 
to take the Lord's name in vain is to misuse religion. So yeah, Richard Dawkins is right. Religion sometimes have done that. But God is very honest with that. Right from the beginning of religion, Jesus' harshest criticism is those who misuse religion. But Richard Dawkins only prevents, presents religion as a pathology. Um, well, I can come up with a lot of bad things science has done. Uh, nuclear bombs, chemical warfare, that doesn't mean all uh, science is bad. Or he'll say, this is a really popular one among your kids, because I heard this in a high school, got in an argument. Or have you ever heard this one? That um, uh, religion has caused most of the wars in human history? Did... Okay, oh my God, what a bunch of BS. Um, <clears throat> there's actually been two separate studies. One's an encyclopedia of the history of wars where they studied it. 97% of all wars had nothing to do with religion. So yes, 3% did. And no offense, most of those were caused by one sect, Islamic. Uh, but still, you would have had 97% 90 uh, of all wars in our history would have happened even if there was no religion. The major cause of war is politics. Um, or he'll give this similar refrain where he'll say, um, religion poises everything. Really? Religion poises everything? Because let's look at the uh, Catholic Church. The Catholic Church gave birth to universities. Uh, the scientific method was born of the Catholic Church. Christianity, even like liberal democracy, is born of Christianity. It's Christianity, our founding fathers, that said that liberty was a God-given right. Our founding fathers did not say that it was a scientific truth. Since atheism, and I'll get into this sex, says there is no proof of morality, then you can't say freedom is a right. Western democracy wouldn't have been born unless there was Christianity. Western democracy would not have been born if all existed was atheism. And so Sam Harris likes to say that Christianity prevents, this is part of the poisoning, prevents free speech. But it's not a Christian nation that prevents professors from giving lectures that will upset the state. That's the atheism of the Soviet Union, of North Korea, of China. You ever speak out in any way that upsets a state and you will be in prison. So John Lennox, this Irish Catholic um, astrophysicist, says, I know this woman um, who escaped uh, um, East Berlin, who she wasn't allowed an education because at one point in her el elementary career, she wouldn't swear uh, to atheism. She escapes, becomes a scientist. He says, you know, um, where is Sam Harris's evidence that Christianity suppresses free speech? That's actually atheist regimes of North Korea and all those. After hundreds and hundreds of pages, Richard Dawkins says everything in religion is poisonous. Really, he can't name one thing religion has done. He can't, you know, he's so entrenched in his own bigotry and then calls himself a scientist. No offense, it's a Catholic church that gave birth to universities and hospitals. Um, millions contributing to caring for others, but really he can't name one thing that Christianity has done to help humanity? <clears throat> I really don't think he's looked at the evidence. I just think he's a religious bigot. Um, and Richard Dawkins says that the state should have the right to remove children from parents who indoctrinate their children in religion. Now, you can say, oh, that's crazy, but wait a minute. Um, he goes on this big thing that that's a form of child abuse. And I was once having dinner with his family, and <clears throat> they had these teenagers, and this one teenage daughter says, uh, it was a feast of Mother Cabrini, and says, well, I think Mother Cabrini was an evil person because she forced children to learn uh, religion. Okay, that's straight from Richard Dawkins. She doesn't know it, but that's what she heard. And she says, I don't, I don't think you should ever force a child to think one way or another. He says, I should be able to do what I want. If I want to date an older man, I should be able to do whatever I want. So, you know, because I'm polite, I kind of held my tongue. 
Um, and I said to the mother, I said, you know, she's getting that from Richard Dawkins. You know, you, that, uh, that's a form of child abuse. She's, that's not the part I'm concerned about. <laughs> she says, I'm concerned about the fact that my teenage daughter just said she should be able to date. <laughs> um, and she says, believe me, that's a signal that there's something wrong. And it turns out, oh, wow, I did miss the boat on that. Yeah, she was involved in something very dangerous. But my point being is that they repeat these refrains. Really? Richard Dawkins says children should be removed it's as a form of child abuse because they're not given a, a choice? Well, then should you remove a child who's being indoctrinated in atheism? Because that's a type of philosophy as well. Um, and uh, he says they should also be removed because, quote-unquote, um, Religion causes stress from guilt. Now, I want to know, I, uh, I want to know your scientific evidence, because there's this ve very, very, very famous uh, psychologist, um, Chikai. If you know who he is, he's Hungarian. Um, he's the founder of uh, um, positive psychology, or at least one of them, and um, Staten Wilson, who did research on this. They did this massive, massive scale comparing uh, the psychological effects of various religious group and atheists. And um, what they found is that religion does not cause moral stress. What they found among, and it had such a massive data, they can name the branch of religion, uh, the different effects. Um, but, so, but in general, what they found out is that religious people are more pro-social, have more pro-social actions, are more compassionate and less prejudiced. Atheists tend to be less compassionate, less helpful to others, and more prejudiced. So he wrote, the conclusion is this. Dawkins' armchair speculation on guilt-inducing stress of religion doesn't make it to first base. He does agree that uh, religion is fair game for criticism, but then says, quote, Dawkins doesn't work by evidence and gets no facts right. He is deeply misinformed. And other scientists have found that, wow, those who practice religion live longer, are healthier, are happier, have longer marriages. So I don't know, like you've totally missed the boat on that one, Richard Dawkins. <clears throat> um, so evolutionary Christianity would be a benefit for evolution. Um, so practicing religion is actually psychologically more healthy for you. I'm going to get into that in classes in the future. But my point being is that if science had evidence, if, if atheists had scientific evidence that religion causes poor health or psychological uh, uh, damage, you know that would make the front page of the news. But if the, our best psychologists would say, no, it actually turns out it's one of the healthiest things for you, then they keep their mouth shut. But atheists like Richard Dawkins never cites all the evidence of how great religion is. Or Matthew Paris, and this is a really interesting one, I shouldn't say, but Matthew Paris, he is an atheist. Um, he's an atheist that lived in Africa. And he wrote this article, uh, atheist, uh, An Atheist Believes Africa Needs God. And having lived in Africa, he said, he observed that religion has done more good than any of the GEO's government project international aids. Because at a basic level, you can go read the article, at a basic level, religion causes people to care about their neighbor. neighbor. So people feed each other, they care each other at the molecular level, neighborhoods are more safe. And he said, I'm still an atheist. He said, I'm still an atheist. But he said, in Africa, where he's from, the greatest force for good is actually religion, not government or international aid. And so he can say, well, religion poisons everything, but he misses the millions of ways that religion makes everybody's life safer. So that's his second refrain. So I have to make sure I don't go over because, oh, I only have 15 minutes or less. Um, his third refrain, I'm not going to get through. I have 50 pages, so I was going to go through. His third refrain is, um, all great people were atheists. Well, that's BS. Einstein, 
Let me read Einstein, because this is amazing. In his book, uh, Richard Dawkins says that Einstein was actually an atheist because he was a humanist, and all humanists are atheists. Well, that's circular logic. Einstein's own word says, I am not an atheist. I do, I do not know if I can define myself as a pantheist. The problem involved is too vast for our limited minds. I, may I not rely on a parable. The human mind, no matter how highly trained, cannot grasp the universe. We are in the position of a little kid entering into a huge library whose walls are covered from ceiling to floor with many different books. The child knows that somebody has written those books but does not know who or how. It doesn't even understand the language in which they're written. The child notes a definite plan in the arrangement of the books, a mysterious order which it cannot comprehend but only dimly suspects. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of the human mind uh, the greatest of the most culture towards God. We see a universe marvelously arranged, obeying certain laws, but we, certain, we, we can understand the laws only dimly. Our minds cannot grasp the mysterious force. But anyhow, it, Einstein goes on to say that he does believe in God. But Richard Dawkins, in fact, I've met college students who say, well, Einstein was an atheist. You know where they're getting that from? Richard Dawkins, who just promotes these lies. You know who else I, uh, Richard Dawkins said was an, actually an atheist? Martin Luther King. Yeah, I know, that one seems like a stretch to me, but because, I don't know, I, I, I actually think he was, I think he was involved in religion, but I'm not really sure. But once again, he said, well, um, he was an atheist because um, he was a humanist. Dawkins on religion or on Jesus, says Jesus wasn't an atheist, but he was just a great philosopher who just got confused that maybe he was God. He says, I misplaced my keys sometimes. I don't know where they are. Maybe he just got confused on this. Okay, um, that would make him a lunatic. Um, anyhow, uh, fourth one, and this is, this is kind of important to me. Uh, Richard Dawkins says, there is no moral meaning. So that's a you'll find that as well. Dawkins believes that all there is is the material universe that works according to the law of physics, like computer. If one's a murderer, it's because of broken machinery. Dawkins says we're just chemical robots. We dance to our DNA. There is no such thing as morality. Um, there is no true or false values. Well, if that's true, how can you say religion is evil if evil doesn't exist? You know, like, that's so circular. But... He says, there's no such thing as justice. It's just, you just happen to be born that way. And then it says, but he talks out of both sides of the mouth. But all young people should strive for justice. Well, if there is no such thing as morality or no such thing as justice, why tell them to strive and work for justice? Like, do you really, you know. Anyhow, um, his fifth refrain is that religion is born from fear. My response to that is, really, give me the evidence. Because all archaeological evidence and anthropological evidence, you know what they found? Um, religion actually was born from gratitude. Uh, like I could go on off, but just there's no evidence it's born from fear. If you look at all ancient religions, it was based on gratitude. His other refrain is atheism is logical, religion is irrational. So he, he promotes that any time you um, use the word faith, if you said, oh, I have faith. Oh, faith is believing without evidence. No, it's not. Uh, faith, pistis, means trusting in a relationship. Um, and I, can, I don't have time to go. They did these human psychologies. And uh, the study is anybody who calls himself logical is just blind. And this book, I think it's a funny book, called You're Not As Smart As You Think You Are. Um, and the point being is that anybody who says, I'm smart, you're dumb. It's uh, the Kruger effect. Anybody who says that, they're really dumb. <laughs> um, no, you just say that you work in court of logic, but I could go through and prove how Richard Dawkins does not work by logic. He works by bigotry. Does that make any sense? You're just blind to your own bigotry. So then John mentions scientism. 
Atheism does not promote science. It promotes scientism. Scientism is this idea that all truth comes from science. But not even science has that. You can't, through the scientific method, prove that all science comes from science. Even C.S. Lewis, who is at one time the leading atheist in England, then has a conversion in defense, he says, what, with scientism, what, I can't, you know, he's embarrassed that he believed that because he was an author. He says, no, there's, truth comes in many forms, not just from science. Science gives you data. It doesn't give you truth. You know, history and poetry and a lot of things explain truth. Does that make sense? John Lennox says, no, science describes the world. It doesn't explain the world. And I love that. And he's an astrophysicist. So, so, he's, so he uses this example. If you said, um, why does water boil? Scientism would say, oh, because the temperature gets this high. And then John Lennox says, why couldn't the answer is, why water boils so I can make a pot of tea? <laughs> well, it, it depends upon your perspective. Scientism is not promoting science. It's promoting this idea that the only truth I want to see is something that comes from science. So scientism and science are two opposite things. And John Lennox makes this great point that you know who promoted scientism was Nazis. Where Nazis would say, it is so obvious according to science that Jews and blacks and gypsies need to be executed. Does that make sense? You can always come up with some scientism to promote your own ignorance. Does that make sense? Um, or the French Revolution. You know, streets ran with blood. The French Revolution said, we are going to work by rational logic. But these people ticked me off. We've got to kill them. That's scientism, where you say, oh, no, there's a scientific reason. But you have no evidence. Scientism doesn't work by science. It works by this idea that, well, if I call it logical, then I'm allowed to do it. Does that make sense? But scientism is not logic. It's just this excuse. Does that make sense? So like I, I got in this argument with one college, well, actually, he's not a college student. He went to college and dropped out, even though his parents were willing to pay for the whole thing because he needed more drugs. And he was saying, he's an atheist. He believes in logic and science. I said, now let me get this right. I have three masters and actually graduated from college, then went back and got three masters. You have a high school degree. And you're saying, I work by illogic, but I read books, you don't. You, like, but what he promotes is scientism, that somehow you know, science figures out everything. Or... Richard Dawkins said, this is scientism, Richard Dawkins, uh, in this debate, John Lennox says, well, you know, look at, um, the universe didn't exist at one time. We know that scientifically, right? And he says, yes, but um, that can be explained by the um, multiverse theory, that there's many universes. So John Lennox then asks, and who created the multiverse? And here's the amazing part. Did you know there's not any scientific evidence for a multiverse? There's not, no evidence, nor can there ever be any evidence, because since we can't go outside our universe, no, there's no evidence, there's no way to get evidence. So when Richard Dawkins says, oh, the reason why um, there's, uh, uh, you know, you don't need Genesis is because of the multiverse. You don't have any scientific evidence of a multiverse. That's scientism, not science. Does that make sense? So what atheists promote is scientism, not science. That, does that make any sense? Yes, the argument against scientism is self-refuting since there is no scientific method to prove scientism. So, I right, hate to be rude, but I did promise always to keep it to one hour. We've gone one hour. So next time, we're actually going to cover... Um, so I can talk about just the new atheists for, and their beliefs forever. Next time, we're going to switch it to 
the next three classes will be proofs of God. If somebody says, well, what proof do you have of God? Well, stick around for three classes, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right, see you later. Have a tequila ball. Oh, did I hit that? Oh, tall one.